Oshinoko. Oh man, oh man. If you haven't watched this anime, for some reason, if you have not heard of Oshinoko, well, whether you've heard of it or not, I'm going to tell you how this anime teaches you that you don't need to be perfect to be happy and just how impacting this anime has been. So without further ado, let's get into why Oshinoko is one of the most impacting anime that has released this year and probably will be the most impacting one. The first episode, two hours long. It was literally could have been a movie on its own. Episode six, absolutely incredible episode. Talking about the struggles about social media, how horrible social media can be, how unfiltered it can be, how ruthless. It was portrayed amazing. And just the other episodes, very solid throughout. I already talked about these episodes in other videos. Go check them out. There's three of them. And besides the episodes, the overall popularity that Oshinoko has garnished is incredible. There's a bunch of amazing things that has happened in regards to Oshinoko. Freaking magazine cover. I think like Oshinoko was like on a huge billboard or something in Tokyo or something. Please correct me if I'm wrong. There's the Memcho VTuber. A lot of freaking insert songs. Just so much passion poured into this project overall. Doga Kobo really went ham with this season two coming out. No surprise there, this anime is extremely popular. It's not afraid of talking about topics that are not widely discussed in anime or just in fiction in general. For example, what I mentioned with social media being ruthless and just the whole dark side of the entertainment industry and how difficult it is. A lot of it is still an ongoing problem in today's world. And the way that this anime portrayed it was super, super good. So one character that I have not really talked about is... Kana. Listen bro, Kana is a freaking amazing character. Seriously, ever since her introduction, she was right there since episode one. She has so much going on with her. Like every single episode, she was always present. There was always something going on with Kana. We always got to see what was inside of her mind. You just grow with her character. We see her when she was a child actor and how her backstory developed her character throughout the entire anime. A child actor and what happened afterwards and just how insecure she is about herself because, oh, she fell off. Not the popular child actress she used to be because she used to be like very cocky about, oh my God, yes, I'm so talented and I'm the best. I get all the roles and stuff. People started getting tired of that and just started getting less jobs and people started with the falling off comments and she literally mentions this later on those comments started getting in her head the more she saw those comments the more she was convincing herself like yeah i fell off i suck i'm not at my peak anymore i'm not a child actress anymore nobody freaking knows who i am everyone will just remember oh it's just that child actress that just fell off it sucks to see how real that is because it does happen to a lot of people some people might think that a certain stage of their life is all there is to it but no that's just a chapter of their life and even if people only know you for that that doesn't mean that you need to identify with that just as everyone else because it's your life like everyone else's we have multiple chapters and kana unfortunately is constantly reminded like oh you're not as good as and popular as you were before and you just see this in her personality so much she's so insecure when she was about to perform with the other girls she used to, she was very nervous but not because of her she was nervous because she was afraid of making the other girls fail. If it were just herself, she was used to failure. She was used to failing. She was used to that feeling of just feeling horrible. And she did not want that for her colleagues. But Ruby reminds Kana that failure is a part of life, that it's normal. This really shows you just how hard Kana is on herself. And I think a lot of people can see themselves in Kana in this aspect and gain a bit of perspective of how hard we can be on ourselves. And speaking of the performance, it was amazing. The animation, the colors, everything, peak, 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 directing wise. One of the first things I noticed, like how the crowd was filled with yellow glow sticks. Everyone was there to see Memcho because obviously she's like the freaking YouTuber and stuff. She has the most popularity out of all three. It makes sense. Not surprising. And still like Kana kind of beats her up like, oh yeah, like there's no white glow sticks. Like, oh, I'm not surprised. It's something that you can't really control. The reality is that Memcho does have all of the popularity right now because she's a really popular YouTuber. So it's not surprising that a lot of people are there for her. Aqua thing, he starts dancing like a madman with the freaking glow sticks. 
and then more people actually started getting more white glow sticks. That whole scene was really, really well directed. It was amazing. And again, it really built upon Kana's character, that little push that she needed. Like, yes, don't worry about it. You are not your past. Please, please remember that. Again, so realistic. Like, Kana has so much insecurities and just isn't confident in her abilities because she's actually very talented both in acting and in singing and we see this when they were choosing who to pick for the center in the stage kind of was like no no not me not me but that being said when they went to freaking karaoke kind of like killed it right she got the most points and it like really shows you how devastating being insecure and just being reminded of oh i fell off or whatever how that just holds you back from living in the present and just fulfilling who you are now both kana and akane feel very real in this aspect they both work super hard and they both are very hard on themselves they both face a lot of troubles and problems but they still remain strong in the industry both characters are super well written they're really good characters and i haven't really gone with on with the other characters for example memcho how like realistic her situation is that she had to sacrifice a lot of her youth in order to give her sister good education and stuff like that it's really really good how she had to lie about her age she's like what 23 or something and that's like bro she's young as hell please 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 bro if you are not like 50 years old do, do not call yourself freaking old okay so i i be seeing a lot of people who are 30 40 good oh, bro come on okay it's incredible what freaking social media and just the media in general just makes it seem like if you're over 20, 25, if you're over that age, bro, you're, you're literally a relic, okay? It's not like that, all right? Please, please understand this. The reason why I say this is because a lot of people think that their life is over because, oh, I'm not 20, oh, I'm not 25, and just kind of use that as an excuse to not chase what they want in life. And it hurts me so much to see so many young people not chase what they want to do in life and just live miserably without chasing what they want to do because they think they're so old that like they can't do it anymore which is not the freaking case but this realism with oshinoko is by far the thing that i most appreciate with any work of fiction the characters feel realistic they're flawed they have problems because that is how real life is we are not superhumans that flawlessly do everything with minimum to no effort we all have our own problems and situations to deal with mentally physically etc and oshinoko absolutely nails this aspect once again having episode 6 be my favorite in the entire series because of this fact alone seeing characters struggle and seeing them grow just makes you feel more connected to them because you feel more connected to the characters you get more attached to them you get more attached to the characters the more realistic it is because you feel for them and when you see their, your favorite characters grow you feel a part of yourself growing as well, and you get the courage that you yourself can grow as well. So that pretty much does it with freaking Oshinoko. I really cannot wait for season two. Hopefully you enjoyed the four videos I made about Oshinoko. I'm definitely making more when season two comes out for sure. The build up, the, the stage play with freaking Kana, Akane, Ako, all of these characters in the same place, it's going to be Amazing. Crack that subscribe button. Tell me what you think about Oshinoko in general. Your favorite characters, your favorite moments. What was your favorite episode? All of that good stuff. As always, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. And please remember that it's okay to be flawed.